and suggests more complex understanding may be found using indirect methods such as art. Okay, so what I concluded essentially was that we don't really, we're not even touching or scratching the surface of understanding or having a big enough view of what's going on to really get it. And that in order to really get that view, it's oftentimes going to take indirect things like art. So that was my inspiration. So while I was at Erg, I was kind of the unofficial artist in residence. And Ergies are all one of the academics and, you know, and policy people, and I'm like the artist. You know? And I started playing with ice. I first started you know, freezing things in ice, you know, like this. And then eventually, you know, and I just did it just to have a, a prop in my presentations. So, like, I want the aesthetics in the room. But now it's turned into, you know, a, a form of art, right? Um, so, what is the situation, what is this limited understanding? So, I'm, I want to just delve into that just briefly before I talk about sort of the effects of the art. So, I'm going to jump around a little bit here in this part of the presentation. Okay. The first thing I would say is that we actually, I think, my reframing of it is we have a situation, not a problem. Okay. So you will often hear people say climate change is all about energy, right? It's that we have the wrong energy and we need to just use the right energy. The bad energy we've got and that we just need to change to the green energy. Okay? You, they won't familiar with this? Is that, would you concur that that's pretty much how people talk about it? Yes. Pri primarily? Do you, do you guys feel like that's enough? Does, do you feel, like when you hear that, do you go, oh, yeah, that's what the problem is, or do you think, nah, there's more to it? Do you, do you all feel that way? Like there's more to it? How often do you ever say that? You never really say that, though, do you? No. We just all nod our head and agree, like, yeah, okay, right. Okay. So... So here's another analogy. We have, a, we have this bank fault. We're living off of free money. It took, the earth, it took the earth a long time to store up all the energy we're using. An eighth of the earth's history, half a billion years, pretty much. And that's if you don't count all the work that was done in plankton in the oceans to kind of figure out sort of photosynthesis for a few billion years. So what I mean by half a billion years is a half a billion years ago, 500 million years ago, was about when we got plants on land. So, you know, plants, you know, take the energy from the sun, and they put out oxygen, and they store the energy, and eventually they, you know, they get buried underground, and the pressure, et cetera, becomes coal. Or oil. Okay? But it took a long, long, long time for that to develop. And all of a sudden, we come along, and it's like, we're using it. So it's as if, I mean, it's as if someone gave you a trillion dollars. It's literally, we're talking at that, on that scale. You personally. And now you feel like you have to use it. That's what, that's the situation we're in. In, in sort of, <laughs> you know. So so you know that's not easily solved by just you know switching to you know I'm not going to take it out of the bank vault anymore. I'm going to figure out how to get it from the people on the street. This trillion dollars that I've gotten used to using, right? Okay. Let me just throw you, flip you for another first, and conceptual understanding in like that's us. That little dot is the Earth from miles, you know, near the edge of the solar system. We're like a little dot in space, so keeping a perspective on how much do we really know here is, you know, this is part of my inspiration about what I'm trying to get at, right? So then when I look at the problem, this is the kind of thing I see. I see a bunch of people running around solving a problem, but not many people stopping to kind of take a bigger look at what the problem is. So, so that's where art comes in. So then there's... The big event for me also is like, well, what's going on on the planet? Well, right now, all the big ice is melting. <coughs> and, and there's not much that's going to stop that at this point, realistically. It's really unfortunate. This is a picture I was lucky enough to take in Antarctica. These are icebergs. But if you look at something like the mountain glaciers of the world, you know, they look a little fragile from this perspective, right? And most of these alpine glaciers are going to have dramatically reduced. They've receded, but more importantly, they've lost their volume. And so this ice is melting. Now, this is an aesthetic loss. This is a spiritual loss. It's a loss out of time. The ice is older than most civilization, a lot of it. Okay? Um, it's also a practical issue. 
right? That, that ice stores water so that even if it doesn't rain a lot one year, there's still water in the rivers. When that ice is no longer there regularly, imagine the chaos of the water issues. So, melting ice. So that got me to melting ice. So like I said, I started freezing things.